Hello and welcome to another episode of Optics Trade Debates. I'm Andras. My name is Theodor. Hello. And here uh, on our uh, table you can see that we have quite a futuristic display. Uh, we'll be talking about the thermal clip-ons today. And uh, we receive a lot of questions on a daily basis over emails and from our customers, which is why I accumulated a few of the most interesting ones and uh, I will be presenting them to you here Taylor, today. Okay. Uh, so um, I would just like to um, uh, start with some general facts about the thermal clip on. So how does it work? Uh, why is it why is it used for? So in general, some the most general basic properties, information, basic yeah. information of, about the thermal clip ons. Okay, so if we start, the thermal clip ons are uh, here. It's better represented. The thermal clip ons are they are a category of thermal imaging devices, very similar to all other thermal imaging devices. That means that they consist of a objective lens, the sensor, all the electronics, and the display. The difference compared to all other uh, thermal imaging devices is that you usually use them as a standalone, so you are looking into the display and seeing uh, what the sensor is giving. So you see all the warm objects and you see all the temperature differences in the, in the, um, in the field of view, so you basically see a thermal image. With clip-ons, they are made that you are able to put them on a daytime optics. Here in this video I will put this on a, on a rifle scope, you can also put them on, on a binoculars, on a monocular and so on. Uh, in this configuration then a thermal imaging clip-on converts your rifle scope into a thermal, uh, thermal aiming device. In some areas in Europe this is allowed, in some areas it's not, so you have to check your local legis legislation. Uh, and where this is allowed, that means that you can convert your daytime rifle scope into a night vision thermal scope. So you're able to, to shoot with this uh, during the night or even also during the day because the thermal is not... Um, you can use it either day or night, it doesn't uh, even distinguish the day and night. Uh, so this is the difference compared to all other thermal cameras you're able to put them on a daytime optics and you're able to convert daytime optics into a thermal uh, imaging device. So now when, when you look through you'll see the radical, yeah. it, the field view you will immediately tell that it is uh, affected by the thermal imaging device yeah. so you will see the whole image. You, you're looking into the, into the display so if you put up the magnification too much usually all these devices they work up to seven 8 is already the maximum time magnification on a daytime optics. So if, if you put it on 8, you will see the pixels into the display because you enlarge the image so much. But still, you're able to, to look at things, you're able to see the warm objects, warm animals and so on, and you're also able to shoot. Normally, again, only in those countries where this is allowed. So uh, Pulsar is one of the companies that is quite popular today that makes, I would say, affordable because they lowered the price point yeah. quite They are still, I think, to other the most affordable, users. but the new Chinese products in this category are coming to the market slowly. I think in the next two to three years, the competition will even lower the prices a little bit. Uh, yeah, uh, and I know that uh, even this year in Nuremberg at EVA, some mm -hmm. of the companies uh, pre um, presented their first ever thermal product. So. Yeah. If we look at this time, so in 2018, who is manufacturing thermal clip-ons? Well, now. the biggest manufacturer, at least in Europe at the moment, is Pulsar. Yes. Then we have some additional companies like Depot is also producing two models. Then Fortuna, uh, they are producing many different models and really high quality ones. They're great, small, compact, really durable, and really good. Uh, then uh, GCCI, the Canadians, they are producing this. Then Armasite is producing. There are many producers. I think also <coughs> Night Pearl introduced Night their Pearl, yeah. this year. Yeah, Sear from Night Pearl, even though uh, you can find a couple of uh, very similar products to this year. So I believe in the next two years there will be many more than now. Now, at the moment, I would say the most notable are Pulsar, Depot. Uh, this is Depot's conventional uh, night vision optics. Uh, I hope that in um, that we will also discuss differences between analog, conventional, clip-on and thermal. Uh, so, Pulsar, Depot, Fortuna, definitely Armasite, uh, and probably I 
Acrobats on it, GCCI and Night Pro. So these are, I would say, the most notable producers now in 2018. I also probably forgot someone. Fleer is probably not making any attachments no, yet. Not at the moment, yeah. not that I would know, at least not on the European market. The American market is completely different because there you can find many different producers. Uh, and, and now one of the most common questions that we receive is um, in regards to the comparison between the thermal clip-ons and the classic light vision clip-ons. So yeah, this is the common question, what should I buy? Should I buy a Gen 2, Generation 2 uh, analog clip-on or should, should I buy thermal? And well, the dilemma is really, really hard, so it's, it's impossible to give a straight answer, go for any one of these two technologies. Uh, I will point out what are the differences. So the advantages of the thermal are that the detection ranges are, I would say, extreme compared to the analog night visions. With an analog night vision, if you're seeing well with a really high quality one, on, let's say 250 meters, that's an achievement. Mm -hmm. with, a, with a thermal, let's say with this uh, Pulsar Core FXQ50, you're able to detect an animal on 1,500, 1,800 meters. And this is a completely new level of detection compared to the analog night vision. This is the first thing. The second thing is, if you're using this for, for shooting, with the thermal, once you do the shot, you're able to look what happened. You're able to find the animal, even if it runs into the forest, you're still able to see what is happening. You're able to see also if it's wounded or not and so on. You're able to see all the details. With the conventional night vision, this is usually hard. You do the shot and when you look where it is, it's already quite problematic. So this is the big advantage. Uh, the advantage is also that <clears throat> when you're using most of the clip-on devices, either thermals or, or analog, can be used also as a monocular. So this is also the core and with this attachment, you're able to use it as a standalone device, not as a clip-on, and you're able to detect the animals. So uh, again, the detection range is really, really... Uh, and I do think that the, this, uh, I would say the ocular part is provided with the, in the box when yeah. you purchase the device, right? With almost all uh, uh, thermal clip-ons. So the detection range is a big, big, I would say, uh, advantage of the thermals. The big advantage of the thermals is also that uh, they do not age with time, like some uh, photo, uh, well not photo, the um, image intensifier, intensifying tubes, they have a limited number of hours, operating hours, and afterwards they fade. With thermals, they always work the same, they're like normal cameras, sensor display, it always works the same. Uh, now, what are the advantages of the analog? The analog uh, devices have the advantage that they are able to see the parts of the animal which are cold. So this is usually the trophy. With the thermal, even if you have a really big 50 millimeters uh, lens uh, and the objective, the animal, let's say red deer, has to come really close that you're able to see the trophy. And even if it's really, really close, you still have problems to see all the details. With the uh, uh, analog night vision, this is not a problem. So the, the rendering of details is much better mm. on the analog uh, night vision devices. Also, the energy consumption is much better on these devices. So here the batteries go run out fast. Here you change the battery once per year only, so or even less. So this is uh, the advantage. Normally with thermals, with most new thermals, you can take videos, you can take photos. You can even live stream the image from it. This is something whether the analog technology is not possible. And I would say these are the main differences. In price-wise, they are almost the same. We all we talk in both categories around 4,000 euros. Normally, there are some exceptions. Let's say Depot is 2,500. Uh, and let's say also the Core 38 and um, 35 are around 3,500. So the prices are depend on the model, from the model to the model. Um, well, well, I have one more additional question here. Yeah. Let's say you go, um, you go on a hunt or you on, on a shooting range when it's mm -hmm. misty outside. So there, let's say there's a lot of mist mm -hmm. in the air. Um, I think that thermals fare better yeah, in yeah. such situations, right? Far better, far better. 
normally even with, with thermal if it's fog you will lose some performance but still you will <coughs> be able to see while with uh, with uh, uh, analog night vision you won't be able to see and then the most critical question is you don't emit any light with thermals there is no illuminator yeah, yeah. so you are not detectable no, no animal can detect you if you're looking into a thermal with the analog night vision devices you always need an infrared illuminator uh, so so they perform uh, perform uh, appropriately and in sign times normally the animals can detect you and of course analog night vision devices um, usually use illuminators that are within the detectable spectrum of the animals yeah. Right. Side, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, the animals see up to light up to 850 nanometers, a little bit less. If you have an illuminator of 850 nanometers, it will emit light in a little bit wider spectrum, not only in one single wavelength, so the animals can detect it, especially red deer can detect it and also wild, boar, wild boars. So normally you are undetectable with a, with a thermal, but it's really really hard to see the trophy so if you hunt a lot of red deer and other animals with uh, with big trophies the analog night vision will be a little better if you hunt wild boars where the size of the body and so on it's more important than well it doesn't have any yes. horse on it then uh, then the thermals are a better choice okay so we already said a little bit about that uh, the thermal clip-ons, at least this Posar mm -hmm. core here, can also be used as a monocular, so we can, in the box you also get this ocular with one times magnification. Yeah. Uh, I also think that... Three times magnification, this is three times oh, magnification. Three times magnification. When you remove it, it's, it's one time magnification because on the scope it has to be without any magnification, so at that time it's of one course. time magnification. So this is three times magnification, we also have the five times? Yeah, this one. Yeah, so this one. If you remove the the adapter, we have separate videos about these adapters. We have separate videos about Pulsar course and other products. If you are interested in, yeah, with this with this uh, attachment, you're able to uh, to have five times magnification and see uh, and use it as a monocular. I also have to point out that uh, with uh, thermals. Compared to night vision, we forgot one, one thing to mention is that usually the analog night vision devices have a wider field of view. Uh, so it's easier to use them than with, uh, with uh, thermals. Thermals have a usually a little bit narrower field of view compared to the, to the analog devices. The thermal clip-ons also have quite a huge energy consumption, right? So they quite big, yeah, this is quite a cases. problem uh, that the battery runs off quite quickly dies fast yeah so uh, it's probably enough for uh, for one hunt let's mm, say I would say with continuous use if you have a fresh pair of batteries either in this Pulsar or in Dipole or in Fortuna you usually end up with four to six hours of operating time and this is something what uh, with uh, analog night vision is a little bit easier but on the other hand, the thermals do have some advantages because the detection range is of course, yeah. astonishing. What about the sensitivity to recoil? Uh, once these devices are mounted, can they perhaps, uh, do they have problems with magnum calibers or...? I would say no, uh, at least our experience, because uh, we tested it, this course and the Fortunas and Dipoles uh, with 338 Lapua Mano <coughs> and no problems whatsoever. So we even have one uh, associate in our firm, co-worker, which always shoots 338 and uses extensively all thermals and never experience any problem. So I would say they are less recoil sensitive compared to the analog night vision. If you take an analog night vision and put it on 338, normally this is only my opinion, I can be wrong, but uh, I would trust the thermal a little bit more. There is also one really good video, if you search it for Fortuna devices, how they are tested. I don't know what is the, uh, the name of the video, the title, but uh, it shows how they test their thermal Fortunas for recoil on a, on a big vibrating machine and it's, it's astonishing what they can withstand. Um, so they are not sensitive to recoil. Um, no matter, even other uh, producers, more or less they can withstand any recoil that you can imagine. Uh, when we check the table of specifications of 
let's say for example this score um, there are two um, I'm not two things that are worth mentioning here so the sensor size and the display size true um, can we elaborate perhaps a little bit on this topic first of all this is a this is a topic which changes constantly so if you're watching this video let's say in 2020 it's already a completely different situation than now in 2018 because the producers of sensors they are developing new sensors at a such astonishing rate that every year new devices come out with a better sensor with a smaller pixel and normally better image quality in 2018 at the moment most of the thermal clip-ons have a sensor with 380 by 280 pixels so 384 by 288 uh, so this is the common size the those models which are a little bit better at the moment are 640 by 480 and the common pixel size at the moment is 17 microns. So this is the, the pixel pitch, 17 microns, in 2018. I believe in 2020 most of the sensors will be 800 to 600, something like that. And I'm sure that pixel size will be 12, uh, 12 microns. So it will be even smaller yeah. pixel. Yeah. The same goes with the displays. At the moment most of the displays are around 640 to 480. Depot already has 860 by 600 something so the development in the on the side of the sensor is also quite rapid and that means also now in 2018 640 by 480 is somehow a standard it will change uh, I'm sure that in 2019 in six months or less we will have devices with uh, with bigger displays with a bigger pixel count on displays uh, already on the market um, now, uh, I know that the, the Helion, so the monocular, thermal mm -hmm. imaging monocular by Pulsar offers seven different color modes. I, the, col uh, the core model doesn't offer as many, right? No. I think that there are only two possibilities here. Uh, be, uh, actually, it's only one color and then you have the possibility to reverse if the, if the hot objects are bright or if they are dark. Oh. So in, in, in Pulsar course you have green color and then you can, you can choose either to have all warm objects uh, bright green or if you have them black so, or dark. Basically you can, you can switch, you can invert and switch. We, with others, let's say like uh, Fortuna and Depot, you usually have a black and white image and again you can invert either that the warm objects are white or that they are black so the hot objects uh, I also think that this will also change in the future I think in a couple of years all thermal clip-ons will have video cap capabilities uh, they will have the capabilities of different color palettes and so on I think this will change so that they will they will advance in this direction also um, so we have several other videos in which, for example, we have a video where we talk about the clip-on adapters mm -hmm. for Pros or Core. So I will not um, ask the question regarding this particular topic. In this video, you can you can just check them out. You can just check yeah. them out. We um, there are many. We have we did many videos on this particular field. Yeah. Um, I've run out of questions, and I would like thank to thank you much. for all the answers. Uh, if we forgot something you're always welcome to leave a comment in the comment section or send us an email don't forget to like our video to subscribe to our youtube channel and see you in the next debates video bye 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 see you